Hey everybody, welcome back to the Calibri Tools channel. Guess what? My drill dropped the other day when I was working on a project. It hit the ground, now it doesn't work. See, what do I do about it? Stick around and we'll see what we can do about it right after this. <laughs> So I was using this drill a few weeks back and it fell from the ladder I had it resting on. I picked it up, I pulled the trigger, and nothing. Ever notice there's always something that has to go wrong no matter what the project is. It's like a universal requirement that Murphy's Law has to be a part of the process. So there are a few things that can cause your drill to malfunction or stop working. Number one, did the battery die? Seems like an obvious question, but no it didn't. If we look at the charge on the battery, it's full, right? So the battery didn't die. But if you needed to see if the battery is at its optimal voltage rating, you can use a multimeter like this one to test it. Now a fully charged battery should test or read at least one volt higher than the voltage listed on the battery. So an 18 volt battery like this one should read at least 19 volts. Okay, so how do we check our battery or test our battery with a multimeter or a voltmeter? Okay, first we wanna take our battery off of the tool and if you notice on the battery, you have a plus sign for the positive pole and you have a negative sign for the negative pole. Very important. The other three connections in there are just for diagnostic purposes. Then you take your multimeter and because this is an 18 volt battery and it's DC current, you want to set the dial to 20 volts DC right there. Okay. Then you take the positive lead, put it in contact with the positive side of the battery and you take your negative lead and put it in contact with the negative pole of the battery. Okay? What happened? You have this one there. Why is that? That's probably because the voltage is more than 20 volts. So you want to turn it up to 200 volts to accommodate the voltage reading. As you can see, it was over 20 volts, 20.7 to be exact. So we had to put the dial on 200 volts DC to get a reading. So the voltage of this battery is at least two volts over the rating of the battery, which is 18 volts. So we can see that it's not the battery's problem. The battery is doing fine. If the reading on the meter is below the voltage rating of the battery, then the battery needs to be replaced. Sometimes the reading is above the voltage rating, but the battery is still not holding a charge. In that case, you may need to have the battery tested further at a tool repair shop. Now, if it's a corded drill like this one, check to see if the cord is damaged, frayed, or if it needs to be replaced. Any kinks, tears, or cuts in the cord can stop the flow of electricity to the switch. And you can use a multimeter again to do what's called a continuity test to see if a wire is bad or broken in the cord. That one's a little deep there, so I got a longer adapter here. That one was too short. Okay, so I took the drill apart so we can have better access to this end of the cord as it connects to the switch in the drill, okay? We're gonna need that access in order to test to see if the cord is working fine or not with the multimeter. So when we're testing to see if our cord or our tool is in good working condition to see if the voltage and all the connections are okay, we're pretty much testing for what's called continuity. Now continuity is simply testing to see if electricity is flowing through a closed circuit, that there's no broken wires or disconnections in the circuit that can cause problems. If electricity doesn't flow, the tool's not gonna work. And the continuity symbol on the voltmeter would be this right here, okay? So you wanna set the dial to this. Right? And when you do that, and you touch the negative and positive leads together, you get that sound. Now, if the cord is okay, we should get that sound when we put the leads on the appropriate points on the switch and on the cord itself, the cord prongs itself. Okay, so I'm gonna need access to where the cord connects to the switch, right? And that's on the other side of the switch. I guess I opened the wrong side, but oh well, we're just gonna take the switch out like this
put the screwdriver there to hold it down. Now let's get a heavier screwdriver. Okay, now we have access to where the cord connects to the switch. You see these screws here? That's where the cord connects to the switch. So you turn the dial of your multimeter to the continuity setting. Now you take one of your leads, either one, and you touch one prong of your cord. Okay, let's choose this one. Then you take your other lead and you touch one of the connections on the switch. You don't hear anything there, but you hear the continuity sound there. So that wire is good. Then you take your lead once again and you touch the other prong of your cord. The white wire is good too. So when we're looking at prongs, we know each of these prongs corresponds to two wires, either the black or the white. So we tested for both wires, they're good. Now if you do your test and you get a continuity sound from this connection and you get a continuity sound from that connection while you're touching the same prong, then that means there's a short in your cord. If you get no sound at all from either connection, that means there's a broken wire in the cord somewhere and the cord is no good. But we see that the cord is good in this case. Okay, so now we wanna test our switch to see if it's working correctly. So you still have the dial on the continuity setting and you can take a lead of your multimeter and place it on one of the cord connections, which is right here. Let's choose this one here with a black wire, all right? And you can take your other lead and put it on one of the wire connections leading from the switch to the brushes. So let's go ahead and place it on the red wire connection. Okay, and we get a continuity sound there. And if we place it on this wire, we get a continuity sound as well. But if we place our lead on this white wire connection leading from the cord to the switch, and we go for a continuity test by touching the wires, we get nothing right now. Why? Because the switch hasn't closed the circuit yet. When the trigger is pulled back, when the trigger is engaged, that's when the circuit's closed. So let's pull the trigger. Now we see that the switch is working. So in this switch system, it's the white wires that close the circuit when the trigger is engaged. Now you also wanna look at the motor itself, the brushes that connect to the armature as well, to the commutator right here. These are the brushes right here. There's one right here, and there's one on this side right here. Okay, guys? I don't know if you can see that, but those are the brushes, okay? They carry the electrical current to the commutator, okay? And this commutator is connected to all the windings that cause the motor to spin. Now, if these brushes are damaged, that could cause a problem where the motor's not acting right. So you gotta make sure that they're not damaged or afraid or not connecting to the commutator properly. If you look down, you see how the brush is touching the commutator, all right? You see right there? That's how the electrical current gets to the commutator and the commutator is connected to all the windings in the armature and that electromagnetic force causes the motor to spin. So you wanna make sure that all the brushes are in good working order and connected and touching the commutator. You can also test the commutator by putting one of your leads on the shaft and using it as a ground and testing each section of this commutator. There's a couple of ways to do that, but I'm not gonna take the housing apart to show you, but just know that you can also test the motor assembly, the commutator, the windings to make sure that the uh, outer shield of the armature, which are these windings here, are in good working order, as well as the windings on the shaft of the commutator. Some of those wires can be broken and also cause the drill to malfunction. Now, another way is to take two leads and test the commutator sections itself. If you look at the commutator, it's divided into different strips. You see how it's divided into different sections. First, you wanna put your dial on the lowest ohms setting, and that's 200. You can take your multimeter and take one lead and put it on one section, and then put the other lead on the section right next to it. Then look at the reading. It settles at around 1.3 or so. Then you simply move around to the next section. And it settles at around about the same. 
and you keep going around and all the way around you test each section right one here one here one here one here and they all should have similar values or around the same value if not there is a problem with the commutator so there's a couple of ways to test the motor assembly the commutator now i took the cordless drill apart and as you can see it's a different configuration because it's cordless right however power is supplied from the battery all the way up to the switch you know into the armature and it was discovered by a colleague of mine a guy by the name of noah who got to the drill before me that this connection was severed that these two connections were not connected as you can see right here so when the drill fell it had such an impact to break this connection here so when he put these back together the drill worked So it could be something as simple as that. Okay, family, that's just a couple of ways you can diagnose a bad drill problem. Okay, so if you learned something from the video, please hit the like and subscribe and share it with everybody you know who may benefit from it. Have a good one. See you next time.